My name is Linda Anello. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida with my husband Nelson and our children Larissa and Brian. Nelson's an engineer with Florida Power and I work in the office at a local elementary school. Our life pretty much revolves around the kids. PTA, scouting, music lessons, junior softball. It was through junior softball that we first met Kurt Harper. Kurt was a volunteer umpire for girls softball. He was kind of a quiet, anonymous guy ordinarily, but something happened to him when he put on that umpire's uniform. Your son-in-law is umpiring today, Linda. <laughs> right, Rick. Real amusing. Hey, I'm all for it. Gives us a nice home field advantage. today, Larissa. Nice out in the fourth inning. Thanks. Real nice boyfriend, Larissa. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys. See you at the Tigers game, Larissa. No, we could have practiced screwball some if you want some. Good game. Secret admirer. Mom, did you and Dad send these? No. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Here comes your favorite person, Larissa. I won't believe what he's wearing. Hi, Larissa. Hi, Kurt. I'm not umpiring the game tomorrow. Real nice outfit, Kurt. Isn't it, Larissa? Volunteer fireman. I signed up. Ooh, pretty impressive. 
Isn't it, Larissa? Hey, just throw the ball, okay? Kurt, come on. I've got to warm up, okay? Kurt. First, you got to answer just one little question, though. How'd you like the flowers? What? You know how much they cost? $45 plus delivery. That's a lot of money just for flowers. And even though we're in a recession, I don't mind spending it because you're a special young lady. Oh. Now, I can spend that kind of money because I'm one of the few people who has a steady job nowadays. And besides, that's how a gentleman treats a special young lady. I'm your secret admirer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Look, Kurt, I've got to go, OK? Can I have my ball? First, what do you say? Could I please have the ball? What about thank you for the? Flowers. Flowers. Thank you for the flowers, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. We're trying to warm up here. Let's go. One more thing. How are you going to pitch to Brooke Palmer today? Um, I don't know. She's she's the best hitter, right? Low and inside. But don't tell anyone I told you that, okay? It's our secret. Just please don't say anything about this to the other mothers, okay? Especially Katie's. I get teased enough about him already. All right. Would you like me to say something to Kurt? Mom, please don't. Let, let's just forget it. Forget I ever said anything, okay? Honey, I don't think it's appropriate for an adult man to be sending flowers to a child. Mom, I'm not a child. Larissa, most 24-year-old men would not be drawn to a 14-year-old girl. And that concerns me. But he probably doesn't have much in common with women his own age, so... So I'm more on his level. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. You're making me feel really great. <laughs> Listen to me. You are a bright, sweet, pretty girl, and of course he likes you. But I wouldn't want him to start liking you too much or in the wrong way. Well, look, I'll avoid him, all right? Just, just don't say anything to him. His whole life is umpiring junior softball. It's kind of sad. I don't want to make him feel more rejected, and he's only trying to be nice. That's all. You are a good person, you know that? OK. But if anything else like this happens, OK? Every week for the past five weeks. And the love notes he puts in with these flowers to a 14-year-old. You spoken to him about it? No, I kind of promised her I wouldn't. I wonder why he singled Larissa out. I always had a crush on Larissa since she was 11 years old and first started playing ball. Well, she was always nice to him, too. I mean, she didn't tease him the way the other girls did. Yeah. All I said was, Kurt can't help it if he's a little different, so let's just treat him like anyone else. He's harmless, Linda. Well, he's got the IQ of seek help. I'd say that's <laughs> different. He's got to be harmless, don't you think? Yeah, I guess. And I don't want to be one of those hysterical, overprotective Speaking mothers. Speaking of which, did any of y'all witness Janet Stanley's behavior at the Sarasota game last weekend? Yes. No. It was so embarrassing. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Look at you. All dressed up for your first day of high school. Looks mm -hmm. like a magazine cover, doesn't she, Brian? She looks okay. Yeah. She looks precious. For sure? Because we couldn't decide whether to wear a skirt or pants on the first day. For sure. <laughs> Well, Kimberly's in Larissa's home room, sweetie. Well, that makes it nice. What time's your mom picking up? Soon. We wanted to get there early on our first day because it's so big and all. Like how big? Over 2,000 people. Awesome. Oh, gotta go. Bye. Uh, bye. Four more years and she'll be going off to college. And that time's gonna go by so fast, honey. Fourteen years has gone by fast. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. You done good, huh? You know, the kids, the house, everything. Yeah. We got a lot to be grateful for. Really do. Kids look so like mature. I know. I suddenly just feel really short. Oh look, there's Jeff. Look. was in it, Mom. What is it? It's a money order. All right. Let's put this stuff back in the box. I'm going to send it all back, return to sender. I can't get on him just for sending her a birthday present, Linda. But just talk to him, that's all. You can be nice, but make him understand the past has stopped. In well, a couple of weeks, she'll turn 15. She'll have to leave junior softball anyway. He'll quit all this. Honey, being easygoing and letting things pass doesn't work with everybody, you know? Yeah. Kurt. Kurt, I want to talk to you. Hey, let's stop all this stuff, okay? You know what I mean, the, the gifts, the notes and all. It's upsetting to Linda, and I, I don't really like it either. What's Larissa say? Look, I'm asking you as Larissa's father to knock it off. Now, no more, you hear? Did you see that big fire over on South 10th last night? Big bowling alley? <sighs> Could have been arson, maybe. Teenagers. Some of these teenage boys are real bad kids, you know, Nelson? Real bad kids. Are you making some kind of threat here, Kurt? Is that the idea? No way. No way, Nelson. I helped put out the fire. I'm a volunteer fireman, you know? You see my uniform? New red one? It's cool. Theresa saw it. I went into the building, and it was still burning. <laughs> the other guys, they say I was crazy. <laughs> they call me hard-ass Harper. They do. But I figure it's my job, protecting private property. And it's important, because we're in a recession now. You know, Nelson? Real bad. Well, the, the recession's going to work itself out eventually. So there's, there's no point in worrying about that now, is there, OK? Huh? Good, good. Now, you've known the family for a long time. We've, we've known you for a long time, right? And we want to keep things nice and friendly. Don't we? You like and respect Linda. You don't want to go upsetting her, do you? I like Linda. I like Larissa. I like you, Nelson. Well, that, that's that's real. That's that's good. Kurt. What did we just agree on about Larissa? No more flowers. Right. Right. No more flowers. No more gifts. No good. More flowers, Kurt.
Well? Hello? 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 Who's there? Well? Is it a man or a woman? I don't know. They hung up. Go back to sleep. Fifth Avenue, your cross streets are second and third. Map page 21D. We've been hit with almost a thousand dollars worth of bills for stuff that my daughter did not order. Well, ma'am, if you just write letters to all those companies explaining your situation, you won't be held responsible for those bills. But can he just do this? Can't you arrest him for harassing people through the mail or I'm something? I'm afraid not, ma'am. Is this individual an old boyfriend of your daughter's, Mrs. Anella? Because I know these young people can sometimes take their first love very seriously. No, absolutely not. No. And my daughter is only 15 years old. Has he had any physical contact with your daughter since this business started? No. No, but uh, he... He writes her all these notes and cards. Uh, all very amorous. He hangs around her school. He calls up. We haven't had a good night's sleep in weeks. Mrs. Anello, unless he's actually hurt or attacked or endangered your daughter in some way, we have no grounds for arrest. State law doesn't allow us to go around harassing our citizens. But he can harass us night and day. That's legal. Well, winter ball season's over in three weeks. That won't make any difference to him. Even if he does lose interest in Larissa, he may just get fixated on some other girl. Yeah. Look at this, George. Hmm. The guy's weird. We gotta draw the line somewhere. The only direct contact he has with her is junior softball. I move that we just cut that off, bar him from the field. Me too. Good idea. Yeah.
there. Nelson and Linda and Nello. <clears throat> I don't care what you do. I got family problems. I'm going to buy a gun. When I get my next paycheck, I ain't going to stop until I get what I want from your daughter. I'm not going to stop chasing her until I get just what I want from her. Mom? Oh, hi, Dad. Can I go into town with Katie Friday night just to hang out and stuff? Not this weekend, honey. Why? Honey, your father said no. Just an arbitrary no? Do you have a reason? I'm not a little kid, Mom. We are not being arbitrary. We have very good reasons. We just... So, what are they? I think I have a right to know. We just thought it'd be nice to have a night out with the family, that's all. You know, we'd go to a movie, play some miniature golf, get a pizza. Oh. Okay. I just wanted a reason, that's all, instead of an order. But I am in high school now, and it's important for me to be able to go out with my friends, you know? Yeah, we know. <laughs> Um, we've all known each other through junior softball for a long time now, and uh, I really appreciate the interest that you have taken in the kids, but lately, Nelson and I have gotten kind of concerned over the attention that you have been paying to Larissa. I've always been real nice to Larissa. Well, uh, Kurt, real nice. we just think that it's much too personal. And uh, after all, she's a part of a team, and we don't think she should be singled out. But she's special. Larissa's yes, uh, special. Kurt, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I think she's special too, but she is only 15, and we yeah, don't well, think that go, you okay? should. It's right no, for I you to be go, sending things. Kurt, this line we don't think it's right for you to be sending things to the house. You've got a couple of screens here ought to be repaired. Okay, uh, let's see the screens, the security bars, the deadbolt locks, and uh, that's it. Yeah, what about when she leaves the house? We're supposed to get her a can of mace and enroll her in a self-defense course? Self-defense? Isn't that what the police are for? Mrs. Nello, we have to protect the interests and rights of all our citizens, even the guy who wrote those letters. Unfortunately, we don't have a law in the books to cover this. But if he's made all these threats, can't you uh, kind of threaten him, too? No, ma'am. Mr. Harper has not stepped outside the law. Not yet, anyway. Kurt? Kurt, it's Linda and Nello. I know you're in there, Kurt. And I, I just want to have a little talk with you. I have nothing to say to you! I want you to stop sending things to the house, Kurt. I want you to stop hanging around Louisa's school. It's not against the law to be friendly. No, but I think maybe you should find a friend who's more your own age. Now, I've spoken to the police about this, Kurt. Get off this property! Or I'll call my landlord and say you're trespassing. He'll have you arrested. Kurt, maybe you need to get some help. Now, I, I can help you. I can help put you in touch with some good psychiatric... <laughs> my daughter has the right to a normal life! You got a driver's license, have you, Derek? Oh, yes, sir. You want to show it to me, please?
Well, real good. You all have fun now. I hope the right team wins. We're going to whip their beehives, sir. Uh, Derek, could I have just one quick word with you? No. Well, promised. You promised. But I want you back in this house before dark. Mother! Before the sun dips below the horizon line, I would like you back in this house. sit anywhere near Larissa and the kids, but I just, just feel we ought to be there. Just, just to keep an eye out. Honey, Larissa's out with a good-sized group of friends, including a couple of pretty husky teenage boys. And she's going to be sitting in a stadium in broad daylight with a whole bunch of other people. She's going to be just fine. What do you say we let her forget about old Kurt for one afternoon and have a little fun? Hmm. Did you play junior softball? I played junior softball when we lived in Lauderdale. What position did you play? Pitcher. No way. You are not going to believe this. Press that down to Louisa. Give this to Louisa, Nello. To Louisa? Okay. So, uh, what was your ERA? Um, it was just so-so by the end of the season. 4.83. What was yours? Right around in there. Hey, can you give this to Larissa? Larissa? Here. Who's it for, Larissa? Larissa, are you going to go out for girls softball here? Hey, pass it to Larissa. Dude said pass it to Larissa. You're kidding. Kevin, do you, do you know who this is? Came from up there. Oh, weird. Larissa, behind us, under the world. Hey, that looked pretty good. Louisa, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I just, I get tense sometimes. Know you were gonna be at this game. It's like he's either got your phone tapped or he's got some sort of mental telepathy with you or something. <laughs> Please don't say stuff like that. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding around. <laughs> Thing is, he must have followed us. He does that sometimes. He parks down the road from our house and he just sort of sits there and waits. <sighs> I would be so freaked. Please don't say anything about him to Derek, okay? Well, I won't, but Kevin might have said something to him already. Kevin knows? How does Kevin know? Larissa, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> Let's check and see if he's out there. Sure. It's all clear. Okay, here we go. Now, is this better than the mall with a bunch of strangers? Yes. <laughs> Anything else? No. Uh, brownies in the oven? Uh, help yourselves. Hey. Mom. Hey. Did you guys see Brett and Stephanie in the cafeteria today? Mm -mm. It was so gross. They were feeding each other. Oh. I thought she liked Derek. She does. She says that Derek's face and Brett's body would be the perfect combination. Oh, right. Forget brains and personality, <laughs> right? Right, right. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you liked Derek, Louisa. You guys talked to each other all through the last football game. Not really. He only sat with me the first half. I mean, he's really funny and I like him, but more as a friend. Actually, Larissa's more into older men. What? What? Actually, dating is just not that big a priority for me. Right. Marisa, I'm sorry. Put it out. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's just it's too much pressure. I, I don't want to deal with it. You mean oh. sex and HIV. My mother told me that she was a virgin when she got married, and she was almost 23. All mothers say that. Yeah. It could be true. Yeah. 
And it could rain gummy bears tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I think I should have been born in the 50s. I'm going to get some more diet sodas. Anyone want one? Yeah, yeah me too. Away. Okay. Me three. Me three. <laughs> Take lots. Everyone knows diet soda neutralizes junk food calories. <laughs> this time it's really him okay just stay inside it's okay it's okay oh hi linda i was just checking on you because i know that nelson went on fishing yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do kurt 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 what is your absolutely most unfavorite color uh, huh unfavorite uh -huh. would be uh orange uh, i guess purple. Purple, purple well then the first thing i'm gonna do is drive to save mark and buy a great big can of orange spray paint the day glow kind and a great big can of purple, and the next time you show up here like this, I'm gonna spray paint your nice gray car all orange and purple from bumper to bumper. Now, what do you think of that? You can't do that, Linda. That's against the law. This car is private property. You can't well, this private, private property. Well, this car is private property, so's that house, and so's my daughter. Do you hear me? I hear! I hear! You've all agreed to the following. Curtis Harper agrees to have no contact whatsoever with any member of the Anello family, either in person, by mail, or by phone. Should any such contact take place, the Anello family reserves the right to pursue legal action. If we're all agreed then, we just need your signatures at the bottom left, Mr. and Mrs. Anello. And Mr. Harper, bottom right. You and Linda want me to sign this, Nelson? We want you to understand it and sign it, Kurt. OK. Nice seeing you both again. I miss seeing you at junior softball. I can still umpire, you know, just not at Northfield. Did you read that piece of paper you just signed, Kurt? <sighs> Nelson, is Linda upset with me or something? Kurt, we just both think it's time you got some new interests. You understand that? Yeah. I'm thinking of signing up with the fire academy. Be a career firefighter. You know, it's a good, steady job. $21,700 a year just to start. You know, that's good money in this recession. There's a lot of layoffs all over Sears and GM. You know that big tire store over on Playa Boulevard? I wish you wouldn't talk to him. You just encourage him. Just don't see any point in making the guy mad, that's all. It just makes the situation worse, Linda.
I'm sorry. It was my fault. Hey, you. How many times am I going to have to tell you? Now get out of here. This is a public school. It's taxpayer supported. I pay my taxes. I can be here. This is a public school. I love you, Larissa. I love you. I can be here. I love you, Larissa. All the reports you filed kept coming across my desk in the juvenile division. I got concerned. You notice how those keep getting stranger? So do the phone calls. Yeah, we thought he'd ease off if you couldn't see her at the ballpark, but it's almost a year. He's obsessed. We tried taking him to Citizens Complaint Court. He sat there grinning. Oh, he uh, signed this. He did lay off for a week or so, but you know, he's kind of like that shark in Jaws. You may not be able to see him, but you know he's out there, and you know he's going to be back. Well, there's got to be some legal way to get this guy. Maybe bring him up on child abuse charges. So that's stretching it, but she is a minor. I'll do what I can for you. In the meantime, get an unlisted phone number. Give yourself that much peace, at least. Nelson Anello. Nelson Anello, engineering. Hey, Nelson. I'll say, Kurt, getting to know the sound of your ring. You know, Larissa's birthday's coming up, and I wanted to ask you what to get her. Because last year, she didn't like what I sent her. She threw it in the trash, you know? It wasn't very friendly. I'd pay attention to that, Kurt. Well, I was thinking maybe you could meet me somewhere, and we could talk about her birthday, talk about some other stuff. Well, Kurt, you've asked me to meet you two or three times before. You never show up, do you? Yeah, well, I got a lot of responsibilities. But I'll definitely make it this time. How about the softball field? OK, Kurt. I'll meet you in uh, an hour. We got a lot of stuff to straighten out. Well, I'll be there. Okay, I'll see you later. Police Department. Yeah, Detective Polanis, Juvenile Division, please. Keep going. Your faithful friend. Parked in the handicap zone. How appropriate. Larissa, if he does something bizarre, the first day my mom lets me take her Just car to school. Just keep walking and totally ignore him. He's always there. It's like being haunted. Katie, don't look at him. Don't ever, ever look at him. It's worse than being haunted. This guy's really real. He could, like, do something. Follow you anymore. I'll just sit there until my mom gets home from work. Too weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe I should just shave my head or something. Maybe then he'd lose interest, huh? <laughs> well, you are getting weird. <laughs> Please, it was a joke. You gotta keep your sense of humor no matter what, you know? So, um, are you guys going to the party after the game Friday? I'm not sure. Um, actually, I'm not sure either. Well, my mom could drive us. The whole point to turning 16 is that your parents don't have to take you everywhere anymore. Besides, Larissa. What? Go on, Katie, just say it. What? Look, Larissa, 
My mom said I can't do anything with you after dark anymore. Yeah, mine too. I told her she was being absolutely ridiculous. I told her he's never actually done anything. It's just, it's just that he's always there. Wherever you go, Kirk goes. It's just that he's so obviously abnormal. He wouldn't be doing any of this in the first place. So who knows what he'll do next? It's like being around a ticking bomb. I'm really sorry, Larissa. No, I absolutely understand. I really, I really do. I just don't know how you can put up with it. If it was me, I'd have gone into total meltdown months ago. What else can I do? I can't just let him control my life, control my thoughts, control, control my. I can't believe it. Dad, what are you going to drive now? Well, I got a little deal on a used car. Now, look, it's in pristine condition. It's got new tires, new brakes, a new car alarm system. Hey, Brian, what's your show how the alarm works? Do I get a car when I turn 16? Well, stranger things have happened. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mom. Oh, honey, honey, you deserve it. But I don't want you going anywhere alone in it, OK? And no matter where you do go, you check with me or Dad first, even if it's just a block away. Okay? Uh, yeah, OK. OK. Hello. <laughs> oh, morning, detective. Detective. Morning. We had a development I knew would be of interest to you. We arrested Kurt Harper last night for phone harassment and trespass. Oh! Hey! That's great! Oh, thank you. <laughs> really? You really got him? I hereby sentence you to a one-year period of probation, which is to include weekly psychiatric counseling. I'm also ordering you, Mr. Harper, to have no contact with Larissa Anello or any member of the Anello family. You'll not phone them, You'll not drive or park your car on or adjacent to the Anello property. Is that understood, Mr. Harper? Yes, Your Honor. Next case. The probation seemed to make no difference to Kurt. He knew just how far he could push things before he crossed the line. It was bizarre. Even when he violated his probation, the courts would simply extend it a few more months into the future. He'd become part of our daily life. I'd look in the rearview mirror, and there that gray car of his would be. And if I didn't see it, that means he too. other people for the rest of the evening. Honey, no. Mom, I cannot be with my parents or in my house every minute of my life. I feel like I'm the one on probation, like I'm under house arrest. We haven't even seen Kurt for two weeks. OK. You drive to school on your own, and I will follow you in my car. How about that? And then as soon as you all get back from Clearwater, you call me, and I'll come over and follow you home. All right? All right.
Hey. Hey, you sounded really great up there tonight. For a mere woodwind, I mean. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm flattered. Well, some of us from our section are gonna go get something to eat. You wanna come? Yeah, I... Um, I would really like to come, but... I just can't, Scott. I'm really sorry. I just... <laughs> That's okay. Well, I'll um, see ya, I guess. Bye. You don't sound too happy about it. No, Mom, it was great, but we were only semi-great. How'd you do? Third place. Maybe next time. Honey, are you okay? Yeah, Mom, I'm fine. I'm just a little tired. Listen, you don't have to come follow me home. Everything is okay. Oh, no, 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 no. no. We agreed that I would meet you and follow you home. Mom, I really wish that you wouldn't. I'm on my way. I'm coming. Mom, I don't want you to come follow me home. Please don't. If you're real sure. Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to stand out in the front yard and I'm going to wait for you. You get someone to walk you to your car, okay? All right? All right. Bye. Any witnesses to this? Guy took off. No. What about this? That's evidence. No, ma'am, not without witnesses. And all this, this damage on the side where, where she scraped up against all that stuff? This is because of him. He, he forced her to do this. All you have there is evidence that she scraped up against something. Now, what we need is some physical evidence to link her car to his. Paint streak, chrome, for instance, but... The law says we don't have grounds for arrest here. But I'll make a report on it. Another report? What if that janitor hadn't been there? What would you be putting in your report then? What do you want me to do, Linda? Hire a hitman, round up some vigilantes? You are her father. You are the man here. Now, if you don't step in and take some sort of action, then our daughter is just going to end up a tragic statistic. And I don't know how I could go on with you, knowing that when our daughter was in trouble, you did nothing. You really think I don't want to go beat the crap out of this guy? If he's not stepping outside the law, I'm the one who could end up in jail, and he'd still be out there. What if he decided to get back at me by going after Larissa? 
Who'd be there to watch out for her then? I have to think about that possibility, Linda. We both do. Thinking and theories aren't fixing this, Nelson. He has been testing us, testing you to see if you would ever take control here, and you haven't, so he has. He is in control of this family. The guy has some circuits crossed. He's out of whack. That's why I have to stay under control myself. Someone has to stay cool here. You can't engineer your way out of this one, Nelson. No. You can't get out your slide rule and do it by the numbers. Without witnesses, this note isn't enough to time to any specific act. Well, thanks for stopping by so early. It's no problem. I'm in the area. I'll keep on it. This is evidence of trespass. And that's one more probation violation to add to his record. And there is other evidence. Larissa, do you recognize these letters? Yes, he sent them, Curtis Harper. He writes them all the time. You've received a lot of these in the last two years. Dozens. Would you look at these and tell me if you notice anything different about them? He sent these <laughs> after that night he chased me home from school. Did he send them all at once or every few days? Every few days. Larissa, would you please read them for the court? <clears throat> Dear Larissa, what do you think I will do next to your car? Sign Curtis A. Harper. <clears throat> Dear Nelson, please give me a call at my house Sunday night because I need to talk to you about something I did to Larissa. When you call, do not be upset or mad. C-A-H. I am watching your every move. This is all the time watching you. Curtis. Dear Louisa, I am giving I'm giving you a wake-up call. I am watching you, Larissa. Dear Larissa, I will be watching for you to leave today so I can catch you. I am out there. No telling what I might do to you if I catch you. Mr. Harper. Mr. Harper. This is the fourth time you've appeared in court on charges stemming from your harassment of this young woman. And it's only because you haven't appeared before me personally until now that I'm reluctantly going to give you one more chance to get your life squared away and to seek professional help. But one more parole violation, sir, and I'll see to it that you do some hard time. Let the record show that if the defendant is arrested in the near future, he is to appear only before me. I mean business, Mr. Harper.
Another extended probation. We thought our situation was hopeless. Then we heard that Kurt had panicked and left the state. He was out of our lives for the first time in two years. Larissa started to behave like a normal, happy kid again. She really blossomed that summer. She got a part-time job at the mall. We let her start dating again at last. And Nelson and I could finally begin to relax. We began to feel like a couple again. Of course, we still heard from Kurt. He wrote us regularly from Kansas City, where he was living with his grandmother. Look at the postmark. I'm back. I'm leaving here in a few minutes. Mom. No, Mom, I, I, I just think I it's... The lights, Larissa. It's not necessary. My car is not that far. I... Okay. Okay. Bye. Night, Donna. See you Friday. Hotel. It was the most fantastic week of my life. Most fantastic week of our marriage, let me tell you. And you know, now that the kids are a little older, we can go away without working quite so much. It was heaven, Linda. You should really get yourselves down there. Wow. It does sound perfect. Sure does. Well, now, since you say this thing starts at 8, we gotta get moving. Teresa, we're leaving. Okay, have fun. Honey, come here, will you please? Wow, Mom, you look really nice. Okay, thanks. So do you, Dad. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, hi, Mrs. Boyer. Hi. hi, Mr. Boyer. Hi, Larissa. Now, I left the number where we'll be by each of the phones, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'll call you during intermission. Okay. I'll be fine. We won't be late. Oh, Linda, I made 11 o'clock reservations at La Veranda. They've got a really nice after theater supper. Oh, well, we'll see. Now, uh, your brother's at Troy's, and I left that number, too. And, uh, uh, I'm arming the security system. Mom. Linda. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.
I wanted to get rollerblades, but you know Rick. I did get him to rent a couple of those putt-putt motorbikes. We tooled around the island, and we went snorkeling, and then Rick wanted to go deep-sea diving. Rick, Rick, turn around. We have to go back to the house. Excuse me? What's the problem? I got the tickets right here. I just saw his car heading toward the house. We have to go back right now. Linda, the guy hasn't been near the house in months. I don't care. I'm not taking chances on a crazy man. There's got to be 500 cars like him. Rick, turn up at the next intersection. There's no left turn, huh? Well, go around the block or something. Just get me back to my house. Okay, okay. He's going to take you right back there. Just calm, calm down. You see, not a sign of him. Well, he's not going to park in the driveway, Nelson. Besides, I've told all the neighbors to watch out for his car. Larissa? Look around back. Larissa, honey? Oh, Jesus. Larissa? She's not there. She probably went out with some friends. Oh, my God, Nelson. I'm calling the cops. Hi. What are you doing back? I can still make it. I'm not leaving. Linda, you are overreacting. We haven't seen hiding or hair of this guy in months. Now we know he's back, don't we? We got a picture from him, postmarked St. Petersburg. That doesn't mean a damn thing. He could have had someone else in that. What picture? <sighs> Nothing. I go to your room. I am not leaving her, Nelson. But you go on since seeing the king and I seems to be so important to you. What picture, Mom? Larissa, please go in your room. This is insane. Yes, it is. I don't give a damn about the damn king and I, and you know it. You and I haven't had a night out together in almost three years. We haven't had a night in together, for that matter. I love our kids, too, Linda, but we can't just be parents. We've got to find a way to be a couple, too. My priority are my children and their welfare, and I'll do whatever I have to for that, Nelson. Obviously, your priorities are different. So you go ahead. Go on. Have a swell time. Sorry, she she gets upset. Well, it's an upsetting deal all around. Somebody left a gift for you while you were at lunch, Larissa. Some guy. You're kidding. Was it Scott? I don't know. Melissa talked to him. Oh, there's a card. Wear this on our honeymoon. Oof. This look like Scott's writing? Saw Derek Dawson at Captain Videos. <laughs> He's got a summer gig there. Bad hours. Minimum wage plus an acute case of video pallor. I thought he was born with a tan. I told him we'd been uh, <laughs> hanging out. He said he always thought you were really hot. Hot? OK, cool, <laughs> but bright. You want to finish those fries? Go ahead. We were talking about that older guy that was obsessed with you. What's up with that? Is he still hanging around? What's with him? He can't find anyone his own age? Can we talk about something else? You know, if you look like Tom Cruise, maybe. I'd see why you'd be interested, but... Just shut up and help me pick a movie, OK? I heard there's a new Freddy Krueger out. No, no. Nothing scary and nothing bloody. All right, OK. You work with me on this one.
I'm telling you, don't touch her. Hey, what'd I just say? So this older guy's pretty much out of the picture now? Yeah, I hope so. I don't want to talk about that. How about this one? Foreign? Marcel's tape in there somewhere. Yeah, you know, I want to be the white Winton when I grow up, but I don't think I have the chops. You say it's really hard for going play classical or jazz. Only technique. What is this guy's problem? Oh, no. Oh, no, it's him. It's Kurt. All right, uh, look, that's it. What, I'm going to kill him. Pull over. No, no, no. He's too crazy. Okay. I'll be fine. Uh, so, you know, I'll call you. Thanks. Scott, are you sure you're okay? You sure you're okay to drive? It's only a couple minutes home. I'll be right behind you. Stitches, you with a broken wrist, and he ends up without a scratch. I was ready to kill him. I really was. Hi, Louise. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> okay. How um, how's she doing since this last episode? Okay. Considering she can't go out in public, can't be left alone in the house, can't drive her car and doesn't have any friends left. Who dealt? I didn't. Well, why didn't they arrest him? You said they had so many witnesses. Nobody wanted to get involved. And Scott's mother refused to press charges. Of course, she won't let him see Larissa again. Mm. Rick says that Nelson ought to get a gun and just shoot the guy. Yeah, that seems a little extreme. Or hire well, somebody to beat him up. 
Oh, and uh, I just got a letter from Kurt saying he got a job as a security guard. What? So I guess he has another nice new uniform. And a gun. point of turning 16 is that your parents don't have to take you everywhere anymore, Larissa. Wherever you go, Kirk Who knows what he'll do next? It's like being around a ticking bomb. Real nice boyfriend, Larissa. Mm -hmm. He's just always there. It's like being haunted. Worse than being haunted, this guy's really real. He could, like, do something. He's got some sort of mental telepathy with you. Or... And my mom said I can't do anything with you after dark anymore. Larissa, it's time. Larissa. 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 Baby, honey, baby. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's, all right. it's only a bad dream. It's only a bad dream. Honey. It's okay. Honestly, it's okay. Throws up before school every morning. He has nightmares every night. He's not just lurking outside anymore. He's gotten way deep inside her mind, and there's no way I could protect her from that. We should have just left when the whole thing started, instead of standing by our damn principles. Just get out of St. Pete. Get out of the state. Make a new start somewhere. You know how important it is to her to graduate with all her friends? God, she ought to be able to at least have that much of a normal life. <laughs> He'd be there for that, too. You can count on it. God, it's been going on so long now. It just keeps getting worse. I can even see it in his handwriting, and that scares me. And then, I can't help it, Nelson. I'm really starting to think some weird thoughts. I've been thinking that maybe it wouldn't be so bad going to prison. If I could just make it safe for her. If I could just get rid of him forever. Here you go, ma'am. Linda! No. 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 No! Linda, Take them away! From us. <gasps> they're from us! We just wanted to cheer you up a little bit. Listen, there's a 
There's a woman I heard about in Tallahassee. She, um, she tried to get a bill, a, a stocking bill, it's called, introduced into the state legislature a while back. Introduced, not passed, just introduced? Well, I don't think she got a lot of support from the others. I really don't know. Yeah. But she couldn't even get him to listen to her. <laughs> but they just laughed in her face. Well, why don't I see what I can find out? Okay? Dear Representative Hansen, my name is Linda Anello, and I live in St. Petersburg. Through a friend, I have been able to find you, a hope for my daughter's life, liberty, and her pursuit of happiness. I have been to court four times. He, the convicted criminal, rarely shows up. I have been to his parole officer, but he never goes. He is destroying our whole family, day by day. My job performance is suffering because I spend so much time away, either in court or following my daughter. My husband and I are always fighting, and my son is becoming bitter and angry. Representative Hansen, I wish you could know my daughter. She loves everyone and is loved by everyone. Hers is a life worth living, and yet she can't live it. She must be forever looking over her shoulder, even in her sleep. I have learned that hunting alligators and lobsters in our state is a felony because these creatures are endangered. However, it is not a felony to hunt a human being. It's not even against the law. My daughter's life should be more valued than a reptile's. If alligators are hunted, with the end result being death, what do you think the end result of a human hunt could be? What does the stalker ultimately want? Hello, Mrs. Anello? Yes? This is Carol Hansen calling from Tallahassee. all this copies of all the police records court records every note and letter he ever sent over there's copies of all the phone logs okay what do you have in mind i'm going up to tallahassee at the end of the week to meet with that carol hansen who's trying to get the stalker bill going honey people don't do that go up to the state capitol and try to you need lawyers lobbyists a whole lot of money I just don't want to see you set yourself up for a big disappointment. Nelson, I'm doing it. Don't try to stop me. If I can't protect her and her father can't protect her, and the law can't protect her, then I am going to where they make the laws. Hey, stay home from school and you call your father at work when you get here, okay? I will. Okay. Oh, I love you. Oh. Bye. Call you guys tonight. Good luck. All right, let's go. We're going to be late.
What I don't understand is how we could know Kurt Harper for three years and, and have no clue. 30% of women killed in this country are stalked by a former husband or boyfriend. What my bill would do is allow a law enforcement officer without a warrant to arrest a suspect like this Kurt Harper for probable cause. Wow, that is exactly what we need. What is it that I can do to help you get this bill passed into a law? Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get my colleagues to pass this bill. But how would you like to tell your story to the Speaker of the House? Some of these letters are pretty disturbing, all right. You say it's been three years, Mrs. Anello? She's a high school senior now. She's a good athlete. She's musically gifted. She's an honor student, and she's afraid to go away to college because of him. She's constantly on guard. She's tense and nervous. She does not want to be alone. Mr. Speaker, my daughter is afraid to leave home. I cannot watch my daughter 24 hours a day. Seeing citizens like yourself will take the time and initiative to come up here and press their case is the kind of thing that really impresses legislators. Now, if you are prepared to help us sell this bill as a, a voter, I think you could get more accomplished here than any number of professional lobbyists in their patent leather shoes. Gentlemen, I know you're in a hurry to get to the workers' comp meeting, but I'd like you to meet Mrs. Anello from St. Petersburg. This is Representatives Clymer and Grayson. Now, Mrs. Anello is here to meet with me on my stocking okay, bill. Her daughter's had a problem with someone for Carol, dear, with all due years. respect to your bill and to Mrs. Anello, the state has bigger problems to focus on. We've got fiscal no, problems. Yes, yes, I know. I know. Every cause, every problem, every other crisis is more important than my daughter. I'll get back to you. Mrs. Anella, I have a sister who went through this same kind of thing. I know what an ordeal this can be and how it can affect the family. Elaine? Yeah? I'm leaving early. This is just an outline of the main events that we've been through with him. I have a notebook at home, an inch thick, just filled with the ramblings and threats of this madman. Hi, Larissa. I just want to talk to you. I don't. I just want to hold you. I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh, wait. <laughs> don't, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Listen to me. Need a 907. Kurt was sentenced to 13 months in jail on May 7, 1992. He was released in September 1992, but was rearrested in November and jailed for violation of probation. Kurt always wanted to be a part of our family, and I guess now, in a strange way, he is. Larissa has gone away to college and is really doing well. As a precaution, we haven't revealed its location to anyone outside the family. Carol Hansen's stalker bill 
passed unanimously in the Florida House of Representatives and was signed into law on July 1st, 1992. today, Larissa. Nice out in the fourth inning. Thanks. Real nice boyfriend, Larissa. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys. See you at the Tigers game, Larissa. No, we could have practiced screwball some if you want some. Good game. Secret admirer. Mom, did you and Dad send these? No. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Here comes your favorite person, Larissa. I won't believe what he's wearing. Hi, Larissa. Hi, Kurt. I'm not umpiring the game tomorrow. Real nice outfit, Kurt. Isn't it, Larissa? It's volunteer fireman. I signed up. Ooh, pretty impressive. Isn't it, Larissa? Katie, just throw the ball, okay? Kurt, come on. I've got to warm up, okay? Kurt. First, you got to answer just one little question, though. How'd you like the flowers? What? You know how much they cost? $45 plus delivery. That's a lot of money just for flowers. And even though we're in a recession, I don't mind spending it because you're a special young lady. Oh. Now, I can spend that kind of money because I'm one of the few people who has a steady job nowadays. And besides, that's how a gentleman treats a special young lady. I'm your secret admirer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look, Kurt, I've got to go, OK? Can I have my ball? First, what do you say? Could I please have the ball? What about thank you for the effort? Because we're in a recession now. You know, Nelson? Real bad. Well, the, the recession's going to work itself out eventually. So there's, there's no point in worrying about that now, is there, OK? Huh? Good, good. Now, you've known the family for a long time. We've, we've known you for a long time, right? And we want to keep things nice and friendly, don't we? You like and respect Linda. You don't want to go upsetting her, do you? I like Linda. I like Larissa. I like you, Nelson. Well, that, that's, that's real. That's, that's good, Kurt. What did we just agree on about Larissa? No more flowers? Right, right. No more flowers, no more gifts. Real good. More flowers, Kurt.
Well? Hello? 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 Who's there? Well? Is it a man or a woman? I don't know. They hung up. Go back to sleep. An Avenue, your cross streets are second and third. Map page 21D. My name is Linda Anello. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida with my husband Nelson and our children Larissa and Brian. Nelson's an engineer with Florida Power and I work in the office at a local elementary school. Our life pretty much revolves around the kids. PTA, scouting, music lessons, junior softball. It was through junior softball that we first met Kurt Harper. Kurt was a volunteer umpire for girls softball. He was kind of a quiet, anonymous guy ordinarily, but something happened to him when he put on that umpire's uniform. Your son in law is umpiring today, Linda. <laughs> right, Rick. Real amusing. Hey, I'm all for it. Gives us a nice home field advantage. Thank you for the flowers, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. We're trying to warm up here. Let's go. One more thing. How are you going to pitch to Brooke Palmer today? Um, I don't know. She's she's the best hitter, right? Low and inside. 
But don't tell anyone I told you that, okay? It's our secret. Just please don't say anything about this to the other mothers, okay? Especially Katie's. I get teased enough about him already. All right. Would you like me to say something to Kurt? Mom, please don't. L let's just forget it. Forget I ever said anything, okay? Honey, I don't think it's appropriate for an adult man to be sending flowers to a child. Mom, I'm not a child. Teresa, most 24-year-old men would not be drawn to a 14-year-old girl. And that concerns me. But he probably doesn't have much in common with women his own age, so... So I'm more on his level. Thanks, Mom. You're making me feel really great. Sweetie, listen to me. You are a bright, sweet, pretty girl, and of course he likes you. But I wouldn't want him to start liking you too much or in the wrong way. Well, look, I'll avoid him, all right? Just, just don't say anything to him. His whole life is umpiring junior softball. It's kind of sad. I don't want to make him feel more rejected, and he's only trying to be nice. That's all. You are a good person, you know that? Okay. But if anything else like this happens, okay? Every week for the past five weeks. And the love notes he puts in with these flowers to a 14-year-old. Have you spoken to him about it? No, I kind of promised her I wouldn't. I wonder why he singled Louisa out. Oh, well, he's had a crush on Louisa since she was 11 years old and first started playing ball. Well, she was always nice to him, too. I mean, she didn't tease him the way the other girls did. Yeah. All I said was, Kurt can't help it if he's a little different, so let's just treat him like anyone else. He's harmless, Linda. He's got the IQ of sea kelp. I'd say that's different. <laughs> He's got to be harmless, don't you think? Yeah, I guess. And I don't want to be one of those hysterical, overprotective Speaking mothers. Speaking of which, did any of y'all witness Janet Stanley's behavior at the Sarasota game last weekend? It was so embarrassing. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Look at you. All dressed up for your first day of high school. Mm -hmm. Looks like a magazine cover, doesn't she, Brian? She looks okay. Mm -hmm. She looks precious. For sure, because we couldn't decide whether to wear a skirt or pants on the first day. For sure. <laughs> well, Kimberly's in Larissa's home room, sweetie. Well, that makes it nice. What time's your mom picking you up? Soon. We wanted to get there early on our first day because it's so big and all. Like how big? Over 2,000 people. Awesome. Oh, gotta go. Bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> Four more years and she'll be going off to college. And that time's gonna go by so fast, honey. Fourteen years has gone by fast. Yeah. Yeah. You've done good, hon. Huh? You know, kids, the house, everything. Yeah. We got a lot to be grateful for. I really do. look so like mature. I know. I suddenly just feel really short. Oh look, there's Jeff. Look. was in it, Mom. What is it? It's a money order. All right. Let's put this stuff back in the box. I'm going to 
send it all back, return to sender. I can't get on him just for sending her a birthday present, Linda. But just talk to him, that's all. You can be nice, but make him understand that it has to stop. In a couple of weeks, she'll turn 15. She'll have to leave junior softball anyway. He'll quit all this. Honey, being easygoing and letting things pass doesn't work with everybody, you know? Yeah. Kurt. Kurt, I want to talk to you. Hey, let's stop all this stuff, OK? You know what I mean, the, the gifts, the notes and all. It's upsetting to Linda. And I, I don't really like it either. What's Larissa say? Look, I'm asking you as Larissa's father to knock it off. Now, no more, you hear? Did you see that big fire over on South 10th last night? Big bowling alley? Could have been arson, maybe. Teenagers. Some of these teenage boys are real bad kids, you know, Nelson? Real bad kids. Are you making some kind of threat here, Kurt? Is that the idea? No way. No way, Nelson. I helped put out the fire. I'm a volunteer fireman, you know? You see my uniform? New red one? It's cool. Theresa saw it. I went into the building, and it was still burning. <laughs> the other guys, they say I was crazy. <laughs> they call me hard-ass Harper. They do. But I figure it's my job, you know, protecting private property. And it's important.